Hello and welcome to CAT 4884. In this session we will continue addressing physical security and the different um, measures needed to implement physical security around an information system. There are certain threats to information security that are unique to physical security. Some of the physical security considerations in a facility site are the physical security monitoring components, the essential elements of access control, uh, fire safety, fire detection and uh, response, importance of supporting utilities, especially use of uninterruptible power uh, uh, supplies, and countermeasures to physical theft of computing devices. We addressed the first two in the last session and we will address the rest uh, of consideration in uh, this session. The most serious threat to physical security and the safety of the people who work in the organization is the possibility of uh, fire. Uh, fires account for more property damage, personal injury and death than any other threat to physical security. As a result, it's imperative that physical security plans examine and implement strong measures to detect and respond to fire and fire hazards. Fire suppression systems are devices installed and maintained to detect and respond to a fire, potential fire or combustion situation. These devices typically work to deny an environment of one of the three requirements for fire to burn. Temperature, fuel and oxygen. Water and water mist systems reduce the temperature of the flame to extinguish uh, that fire and to saturate some uh, categories uh, of fuels to prevent ignition. Uh, carbon dioxide systems rub fire of its um, oxygen. The soda acid systems deny fire uh, its, f its fuel by preventing uh, spreading. Uh, the gas-based systems uh, disrupt the fire's uh, chemical reaction but leave enough oxygen for people to survive for a short time. Uh, before a fire can be suppressed, it must be detected. Uh, fire detection systems fall into two general categories, the manual and the automatic. The manual fire detection systems include human responses such as calling the fire department uh, as well as manually activating uh, alarms uh, such as sprinkler system and gaseous systems. During the uh, chaos of a fire evacuation, uh, an attacker can easily slip into offices and obtain sensitive information. They can uh, take the opportunity of people busy uh, getting out of the building and sneaking behind them to get to the uh, main servers or to the uh, information systems uh, uh, or to the workstation. As a part of a complete fire safety program, it's uh, advisable to designate individual individuals as floor monitors that can monitor these type of people that can sneak behind uh, the kiosks. Uh, there are three basic types of fire detection systems. Thermal detection, smoke detection, and flame detection. The thermal detection systems contain a sophisticated heat sensor that operates in one of the two ways, fixed temperature and rate of rise. The smoke detection systems are perhaps the most common means of detecting a potentially dangerous fire and are required by building codes. Smoke detectors operate in one of three ways. Photoelectric sensors uh, which project and detect an infrared beam uh, which is or which uh, if interrupted activates alarm or uh, suppression systems. The ionization sensors uh, contain a small amount of a harmless radioactive material within uh, a detection chamber. Uh, when certain byproducts of combustion uh, enter, a change in the level of electrical conductivity activates the detector. The air uh, uh, aspir aspirating detectors take in air, filtering it 
and moving it through a chamber containing a laser beam. If the laser beam is diverted or refracted by smoke particles, the system is activated. The flame detector is a sensor that detects the infrared uh, or ultraviolet light produced by an open flame. These systems require detect uh, direct line of sight with the flame and compare the flame signature to a database to determine whether or not to activate the alarm and suppression uh, systems. While highly sensitive flame detection uh, systems are uh, expensive and must be installed where they can scan all uh, areas of protected um, area. Fire suppression systems can consist uh, of portable, manual, or automatic uh, apparatus. The portable extinguishers are rated by the type of fire. We have uh, fire extinguishers uh, that's class A, some of them class B, some of them class C, and some of them class D. Class A for fires of ordinary uh, combust uh, combustible uh, fuels. Uh, use water and multi-purpose dry chemical fire extinguishers. The fires fueled by uh, combustible liquids or gases such as solvents, gasoline, paint, uh, uh, liquor, and oil use carbon dioxide, multi-purpose dry chemical, and helon fire extinguishers. The Class C uh, fires with uh, energized electrical equipment or uh, appliances uh, use carbon dioxide multipurpose dry chemical and hell on fire extinguishers class D fires uh, fueled by combustible metals such as uh, magnesium lithium and sodium use special extinguishing agent and techniques Manual and automatic fire response can include installed system designed to apply suppressive agents. These manual and automatic fire response can include installed uh, systems designed to apply uh, suppressive agents. Uh, these are uh, usually either sprinkle, uh, sprinklers or uh, gaseous systems. All sprinkler system are designed to apply liquid, usually water, to all areas in which a fire has been detected. In sprinkler system, the organization can implement wet pipe, dry pipe, or pre-action systems. Water mist sprinklers are the newest form of sprinkler system and rely on ultra-fire or ultra-fine mists instead of traditional shower type systems. This is an example of uh, some of the water sprinklers that are used in uh, some um, uh, areas or some places uh, within an organization. The gaseous emission systems use chemical gas systems which uh, suppress the fire. Uh, until recently, there were only two major types of gaseous systems, the carbon dioxide and the halon. Uh, carbon dioxide robs a fire of its oxygen supply. While the halon is a clean agent, which means uh, that it does not leave any residue when dry, uh, nor does it interfere with the operation of electrical or uh, uh, electronic equipment. Unfortunately, the IPA has uh, classified halon as an ozone depleting substance and therefore uh, new uh, installations are prohibited. Alternative clean agents uh, include the following, the FM200, the Energen, the carbon dioxide, and the FE13, which is trifluoromethane. Uh, this is a diagram uh, that explains how the gaseous fire suppression system uh, where we have sensors, the sensors will go to the control system and the control system will trigger the gas-based suppression agent which will be spread uh, through the uh, sprinklers uh, just uh, uh, dedicated for that gas. 
Uh, other threats could happen uh, due to failure of supporting utilities and structural collapse. Uh, supporting utilities such as heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, uh, uh, power, water, and other utilities have a significant impact on the continued safe operation of a facility. We are talking about, you know, extreme temperature. If the uh, AC is not enough to cool the systems that will affect the uh, uh, workstations, that will affect the server, that will affect the server room and other equipment. Uh, it has to be certain temperature to keep them uh, cool. In addition, we have to keep the humidity at a certain level. Uh, the other thing is the fluctuation of electricity and that will also affect the power coming to the server and might um, cause some interruption of service. The uh, water or sewage, maybe a flood or in the sewage or in the water can actually affect uh, the servers. Um, most of the time when you plan to build uh, a server room, you will build the servers on a highland or in uh, certain um, uh, racks uh, and they will be uh, higher uh, uh, from the ground so it will not uh, get any water or sewage in case of uh, water damage. Um, uh, all these conditions can uh, uh, create condition. Uh, all these conditions can create vulnerabilities for the system, uh, and should be. Uh, we should look at how to protect the information system from uh, such uh, threats or such vulnerabilities. Even the dust in the air can affect. Uh, these workstations or these uh, servers and we have to make sure that the ventilation is working correctly. Although tradi traditionally a facility's uh, management responsibility, uh, the operation of the heating, ventilation and air uh, conditioning, which is the HVAC system, can have a dramatic impact on information and information systems operation and uh, protection. It's not only for facility and facility management, but it might affect other parts of the organization, especially information system. So specifically, there are four areas within the HVAC system that can cause damage to information carrying systems. The temperature, the filtration, humidity, and static electricity. For the temperature, computer systems are electronic and as uh, such are subject to damage from extreme temperature. Uh, rapid changes in temperature from hot to cold or from cold to hot can produce con uh, condensation which can create short circuits or uh, otherwise uh, damage systems and components. The opt optimal temperature for a computing environment and people is between 70 and 74 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is the amount of moisture in the air. High humidity levels create consideration or condensation problems and low humidity levels can increase the amount of static electricity in the environment. With condensation comes the short circuiting of electrical equipment and the potential for mold and rot in uh, paper based information storage. Static electricity is caused by uh, a process called uh, tripo uh, electri uh, electrification which occurs when uh, two materials are rubbed or touched and electrons are exchanged, uh, resulting in one object becoming more positively changed or charged and the other more negatively charged. When a third object with an opposite charge or ground is uh, encountered, electrons uh, flow uh, again and um, a spark is produced. One of the leading causes of damage to sensitive circuitry is uh, electrostatic discharge. The uh, uh, integrated circuits in a uh, computer use between 2 and 5 volts of electricity voltage levels as low as 200 can cause uh, uh, microchip damage. Uh, static electricity is not even um, noticeable 
to humans until levels approach 1500 volts and you cannot see uh, the little blue spark until it approaches to 4000 volts. A person can generate up to 12,000 volts of static current by walking across a carpet. There are two types of failures that can result from uh, the electrostatic discharge. Um, damage to chips. Um, the first thing is immediate failure, uh, also known as uh, catastrophic failures, which occur right away and are usually totally destructive. The second one is latent failures or latent failure uh, or delayed failure that can occur weeks or even months after the damage is done. It's imperative to maintain the optimal level of humidity, which is between 40 and 60 percent in the computing environment. Humidity levels below this range create static and uh, levels above create condensation. The ventilation shafts um, for the HVAC is um, actually uh, very important to uh, consider uh, looking at the air ducts and the uh, size of the air duct. Um, in uh, residential areas it's very small we don't have to worry about that but in large commercial buildings it can be large enough to fit a person uh, inside these um, uh, ventilation uh, systems or air ducts. Uh, in some cases, and especially if you are dealing with sensitive information, uh, we can uh, install wire mesh uh, grids at various points of the uh, air duct just to make sure that um, no one can sneak in through the ventilation system. Uh, in, in other cases, they use uh, um, laser or um, uh, infrared uh, to detect any motion uh, within the air duct. Um, they could be also they uh, could use cameras within the air duct. They have now they have lots of uh, security measures that can be taken uh, within the air duct. Uh, like I said, especially for the one that can fit a human uh, easily, uh, it should be monitored uh, to make sure that no one can use the ventilation system for um, uh, uh, breaking in or uh, to. Uh, uh, cause a threat on the information system. Uh, the uh, power management and uh, conditioning. Um, if we look at the uh, uh, electrical uh, power, uh, the voltage and amperage uh, rating that's coming um, from the outlet, sometimes it um, oscillates or um, the frequency changes which can cause an interruption in services. So interference with the normal pattern of the electrical current is referred to as a noise in the current. Any noise that interferes with uh, the normal 60 Hz cycle can result in uh, inaccurate time clocks or even worse uh, unreliable internal clocks inside the CPU. Uh, grounding uh, can ensure that the returning flow of current is uh, properly discharged to the ground. If this is not properly installed, properly installed, anyone touching a computer or other electrical devices could be used as a ground source, causing damage to equipment and uh, injury or death to the person. Uh, power should also be provided in uh, sufficient amperage to support uh, needed uh, operations. Overloading a circuit not only causes problems with the circuit tripping but can also overload the power load on an electrical uh, cable creating the risk of a fire. The heat that's be, that will be generated within that uh, cable or within that uh, wire uh, can be more than the uh, cable or the wire can handle and that can generate a fire in that area.
um, to take control of that uh, usually we use uh, uninterruptible power supplies um, and uh, that can uh, not only regulate uh, the power that's coming to uh, the uh, server or server room but also can use uh, can be used as a backup power source for major computer systems um, there are basic uh, there are four basic configurations of UPSs uh, which is the uh, uninterruptible power supplies uh, the standby the uh, uh, ferro uh, resonant standby and the line interactive and the true uh, online a standby or offline UPS is an offline battery backup that detects the interruption of power uh, to the power equipment uh, ferro resonant uh, standby UPS is still and offline UPS the ferro resonant transfer uh, transform uh, transformer reduces power problems the line interactive UPS is always connected to the output so it has uh, a much faster response time and uh, incorporates power conditioning and line filtering uh, the true online UPS uh, works in the opposite fashion of the standby uh, UPS since the primary power source is the battery uh, with the power feed from the utility constantly recharging the batteries uh, this model allows constant feed to the system while completely eliminating power quality problems it regulates the uh, uh, power coming to the system and uh, it takes care of any uh, interruption uh, of electricity uh, this is an example of uh, the uh, some of the uh, UPSs uh, and uh, how uh, they work the standby the standby ferro the uh, line interactive uh, the double uh, conversion online the delta conversion online and the standby online hybrid uh, those are the different uh, UPS uh, configurations uh, the, uh, this is uh, one of them uh, that's uh, uh, like uh, zoomed just to make sure that um, you have an idea on how it works uh, emergency uh, shut off one important aspect of power management is uh, any environment in any environment is uh, the need to be able to stop power immediately uh, should the current uh, represent a risk uh, to human or machine safety uh, we need to shut down the power uh, so we look at the um, the problems if we are monitoring the power monitoring the uh, voltage and amperage and we can see that there is an interruption in the power we can shut it down immediately uh, most computer rooms and wiring closets are equipped with an emergency power shut off uh, which is usually a large red button uh, perma uh, prominently placed to facilitate access with an accident proof cover to prevent uh, unintentional uh, use um, it will be a red button uh, that's to uh, that's uh, for emergencies to cut off the current it will be covered with a plastic cover so no one can push it by mistake uh, it can be used only in a case of um, uh, like we said uh, the possibility of uh, uh, power uh, interruption and uh, the need to stop uh, the voltage or amperage increase or uh, problem that might affect the system so we can shut it off uh, immediately for the water problems you know lack of water uh, poses problem to systems including the functionality of fire suppression systems and the liability or the ability of water uh, chillers to pro uh, provide air conditioning we need water we need water to um, uh, uh, operate the water chillers uh, or the air conditioning and um, 
we need water for other areas that does not include electronic devices for fire suppression uh, but on the other hand um, the fire uh, or the water can um, uh, pose a, a real threat uh, any leak in the water can um, uh, affect the uh, electrical equipment um, you cannot get um, uh, this kind of water uh, or leaks or flooding next to uh, a server room or next to um, uh, network closet uh, so you have to be careful uh, in uh, dealing with water and um, you have to have sensors that will detect the leakage and uh, uh, alarm or send uh, uh, some kind of a message to uh, be able to detect and take care of that problem for the structural collapse um, sometimes it's unav uh, unavoidable and uh, it happens due to uh, natural disasters uh, like hurricanes or um, uh, earthquake or other things uh, the only way is to have a structure that is designed and constructed with specific load limits and overloading uh, uh, design uh, limits uh, in, uh, we can actually test it uh, for intentionally or unintentionally uh, uh, possibility of structural da damage or failure and make sure that uh, we don't have any um, um, potential loss of life or injuries so it can be uh, protecting uh, the information system at the same time it can protect people or humans in that area the periodic inspection by qualified civil engineers assist in identifying potentially um, or uh, the dangerous uh, structural errors or conditions uh, within the uh, building uh, especially in the server room or other uh, important areas uh, we can uh, perform uh, what's called uh, testing for the facility system uh, with any phase of the security process the physical security of the facility must be uh, constantly uh, documented evaluated and tested just to make sure that uh, it's up to standards and uh, uh, configuration for that facility uh, the operation and the function is integrated into a disaster recovery plan uh, and uh, standing operation uh, or operating procedures uh, testing provides information necessary to improve the physical security in the facility and uh, identifies the areas of weakness and um, improve them if we have any vulnerabilities then we have to address them and improve that area uh, there are three methods of data interception uh, the direct observation the interception of data transmission and electromagnetic interception with a direct uh, observation uh, one must be close enough to information to uh, breach confidentiality uh, physical security mechanism can restrict the possibility of an individual accessing unauthorized areas and thus directly observing information on the other hand if attackers can access the transmission uh, media uh, ie by using the internet or trapping or tabbing uh, the LAN uh, the uh, local area network they need not to be anywhere near the source of information you don't have to be there you can just tap in and get in the information that you need uh, through the internet it's possible to uh, uh, eavesdrop on uh, signals from cables that emit electromagnetic si uh, signals without actually tapping into uh, those uh, cables the tempest is a technology that involves the monitoring of devices that emit electromagnetic radiation emr in such a manner that the data can be uh, reconstructed the tempest uh, monitoring involves the following um, 
first ensuring that computers are placed as far as possible from outside uh, parameters, uh, installing uh, special shielding inside the CPU case, uh, implementing a host of other uh, uh, restrictions, uh, and including maintain maintenance or maintaining distance from the plumbing and other infrastructure components that carry radio uh, waves. One of the important things that we are using also uh, now on a daily basis uh, is the mobile devices or portable system uh, with the increase of uh, the use of these uh, type of uh, information systems uh, laptops handhelds and pdas mobile computing uh, our phones now are smartphones it requires even more security than the average in-house system many of these mobile computing systems not only have uh, corporate information stored within them but many are uh, configured to facilitate the users access into the organization's secure computing facilities um, they some of the companies they have the policy of bring your own device and they can um, connect your device configure it for you to be connected as soon as you get in the organization with the uh, organization system or information system where you can get uh, the information not only the email but also you can get the documents uh, that's been shared by uh, uh, or between the employees uh, you can uh, get access to uh, certain uh, devices that you can control with your um, mobile device uh, with all these capabilities it has to be secured uh, we have to be careful uh, when we are when uh, mobile devices being used um, the uh, administration the IT professionals uh, they should secure these type of systems uh, once they are uh, they are being integrated within the organization um, there are new technology to support the location of lost or stolen laptops that can provide additional security in case that a laptop has been lost or stolen. Uh, the first type of new technology is uh, Computrace, which is a computer software that is stored on a laptop hardware and reports itself and the electronic uh, serial number of the computer on which it is installed to a central monitoring center. Uh, also available for laptops are burglar uh, alarms uh, made up of PC card that contains a motion detector. If the alarm in the laptop is uh, armed and the laptop is moved beyond a configured distance, the alarm triggers an uh, um, audible or uh, uh, yeah, audible alarm, audio alarm. The system also shuts down the computer and includes an encryption option to completely render the information uh, to be unusable. For maximum security, laptops should be secured at all times. If you are traveling with a laptop, you should have it in your position at all times. But again, you know, in case that, you know, something happened with that computer, uh, uh, if you uh, report to the company, the company will be able to uh, erase the information or um, render the information to be unusable as soon as possible. The other problem that we face uh, right now is uh, remote access. Uh, not all uh, companies, department or um, uh, divisions are in the same area. Uh, we have different areas, different even states, different uh, even overseas uh, companies or departments or divisions. And this, uh, uh, to access the information system, they need to remote uh, to uh, the main uh, site. So we have remote sites, far sites, to be, uh, that need to remote in the main uh, server. Um, it can uh, uh, be in uh, distance from the base organizational facility and include the entire spectrum of 
telecommunicator or telecomputers. The telecommunicating involves computing using uh, telecommunication facilities including internet dial-up or least point-to-point -point links. Uh, and the need for that is for the employees to access uh, either uh, the business network from uh, different places or to access uh, from business to home uh, uh, for some organizations. The uh, IT infrastructure should be set up or configured uh, just to make sure that uh, such in such cases there uh, are no interceptions in the connection uh, no one uh, can tap in and um, interrupt the signal or get the information of the organization uh, there are few organizations that provide their employees with secure connections to their office networks and even fewer provide secure system systems that should uh, that the employee should use from home to um, uh, connect to the organization uh, usually it's like a small flash drive that uh, can uh, give you a token and that token can uh, give you an access for the uh, uh, main network or the uh, organization network uh, with certain limitation and that token will change every time uh, to provide a secure extension of the organization internal networks, all external connections and systems must be secured. Although it is possible to secure remote sites, organizations cannot assume the employees invest uh, their own funds for security to connect from home or from other places. Uh, there are a number of special considerations for physical security threats that should be examined the first of these is uh, the decision to develop physical security in-house or outsource it um, should we uh, build the security ourselves the physical security ourselves or should we hire a company to build for us the walls the doors the fence the uh, provide guards provide monitoring services and other things there are also a number um, of qualified uh, professional agencies that can do the job for you and that can provide consulting and uh, can provide uh, physical security in certain areas. The benefit of outsourcing physical security includes gaining the experience and knowledge of these agencies, many of which have been in the field for decades. The downside includes the high expense of outsourcing physical security, the loss of control over the individual components of the physical security solution, and the level of trust that must be placed in another company. Another area of physical security deals with social engineering. Social engineering is the use of people's skills to obtain uh, information from employees without their knowing it. While most social engineers prefer to use the telephone and computer to make their contacts and solicit information, there are those who are uh, present in accessing the information more directly. Uh, it's required that all individuals entering the facility to display appropriate visitors' badges and be uh, escorted by a security individual when uh, they are in restricted areas and that will um, actually protect the uh, employees from um, uh, people that have the skills to uh, manipulate them and get into the system using their uh, accessibility or their badges. The last thing that we need to mention is um, inventory management. We have to uh, manage the uh, uh, equipment, the resources, the uh, uh, physical security that's needed, um, uh, all this equipment that's been used, uh, it has to be uh, documented um, and uh, managed on a daily basis. It has to be inspected to make sure that it's working fine and if it's not working then it has to be replaced. Um, it has to be classified um, 
differently based on uh, their uh, operation uh, or their processes or their functions. Um, uh, whenever a classified document is uh, reproduced, a stamp should be placed on the original before it's copied. Uh, this stamp states the document classification level and document number for tracking. Um, each classified copy is issued to its receiver who signs for that document. Uh, so now um, we understand that there is a need for um, uh, physical security that we need to plan for and we need to um, uh, not only plan, we need to implement and execute the proper uh, security measures, physical security measures for the company based on the need, based on the sensitivity of, of information and uh, the information system that, that exists in the company. That will be all for this session. Thank you and have a great day.